coming up on West Dakota Fox News at 9. It's a running of the bison after a roadside wreck. Plus, a poorly made pipe bomb detonates in one of the busiest travel hubs in New York City during the heat rush hour. But first... Torn ACL, uh, it appears, yes. A hard hit, knocking out North Dakota's golden boy Carson Wentz for the rest of the season. This is West Dakota Fox News at 9 with Molly Martinez and meteorologist Henry Blakes. Your first news of the night starts right now on West Dakota Fox News at 9. Good evening, I'm Molly Martinez. Despite a win against the Rams and clinching the NFC East Division title, last night the Eagles lost their star quarterback Carson Wentz, possibly for the rest of the season. It happened late in the third quarter. Here he is first and goal, Wentz scrambling out of the pocket and diving for the end zone. This is when the tear happens. He managed to stay in the rest of the series, even scoring a touchdown after the injuries. Eagle head coach Doug Peterson confirmed the MRI show a torn ACL. He'll be out the rest of the regular season and playoffs. Our other top story tonight, New York City's busiest commuter hub targeted in an attempted terror attack. We're learning more about the bomber and his plan and how it was foiled. Reporter Jason Carroll shows us the moment the bomb detonated. Tonight, a man is in custody after an explosive device detonated in the busy Port Authority bus terminal near Times Square. This cell phone video captures the moment. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio calling it an attempted act of terror. And let's be also clear, this was an attempted terrorist attack. Police have identified the suspect as 27-year-old Akayed Ula, a Brooklyn resident of Bangladeshi descent. Authorities say he was wearing a homemade device that either malfunctioned or did not go off as planned. Preliminary investigation at the scene indicates this male was wearing an improvised low-tech explosive device attached to his body. He intentionally detonated that device. Three victims who were standing nearby were hurt. With more than 200,000 commuters passing through the terminal daily, authorities say the situation could have been much worse. The suspect is under close watch at Bellevue Hospital, where he is being treated for burns and lacerations. A law enforcement source telling CNN the suspect had pledged allegiance to ISIS and that he was motivated by recent actions in Gaza. Most recently, investigators say Ula had worked near the Port Authority doing electrical work along with his brother. He had been licensed to drive a taxi in New York, but it's unclear if he ever did. His license expired in 2015. Ula is a permanent legal resident who came to the United States in 2011 to join family members already living in New York. Time now to take our first check on weather with meteorologist Henry Blakes. The Mandan Police Department is staying tight-lipped about a shooting that occurred Friday evening. At least one person was injured. Some residents are worried about the lack of information. It puts people on edge more than anything and don't feel safe around their own homes. Police say they'll tell us more tomorrow. Today, Brooke Cruz, one of the suspects accused of kidnapping and killing Savannah Graywin, pled guilty to all charges. The 38-year-old will be sentenced in January. 22-year-old Graywin was eight months pregnant when she disappeared in August. Kayakers found her body wrapped in plastic in a river. Investigators haven't said how she was killed, but Fargo's police chief, chief calls it a, quote, cruel and vicious act of depravity. Graywin's baby survived. A 37-year-old Bismarck woman was arrested Sunday morning on char charges of child neglect. Officers responded to Vanessa Frank's home on a call of domestic violence. When they arrived, police say so much stuff was in her house they couldn't see the floor. They say the children's rooms were filled with garbage, food, and it smelled like mold. Also in Bismarck, police arrested a 24-year-old man on suspicion of terrorizing. The man's mother says she was asleep when Joe McKenna punched her in the face. She says he then threatened her with a knife. Police later tracked McKenna down and found the knife nearby. In health news, supporters of medical marijuana want to know what's taking so long for the program to implement. Today, the health department held a meeting in Williston. The aim was to get public input. Some testified that they want to get the ball rolling on the voter-approved measure. They argue that it can save lives. The Bismarck Mandan Chamber of Commerce has a new president. Brian Ritter is also the president of the Bismarck Mandan Development Association. He will be at the helm during discussions about potential restructures of both organizations.
Meantime, city leaders will need to find a new way to fund road maintenance in Bismarck. The city was planning on a street utility tax, but legislators said no way. With that tax out of the picture, the alternatives for the city could include raising the property or sales tax. If that does happen, voters would need to approve it. An unusual wreck in South Dakota called for an unusual rescue. Nearly 40 bison were in a tractor trailer that rolled over into a ditch. Firefighters had to cut a hole in the roof to let them out into a pasture. One of the bison died in the accident. The animals are now being watched for any sign of injury. Well, as online Christmas gift orders make their way to your house, tonight a warning. Porch pirates are laying in wait, hoping to turn your packages into stolen property. Reporter Molly Hurley spoke to law enforcement who have a solution. And all eyes are on Alabama. In a few hours, the polls will open for a special election. On the ballot, a man who several women say molested them as teenagers. But Republicans need him to win. Kaylee Harger explains now two presidents are using their star power in hopes of swaying voters. The Senate seat is up for grabs tomorrow, and it used to belong to Jeff Sessions. You can tune in tomorrow for election results, plus what local lawmakers had to say about the race. Let's throw it over now to meteorologist Henry Blakes for a full look at our week ahead. Look at what firefighters are dealing with from the air. You can see to the left-hand side of your screen, it's entirely ash. On the right-hand side, that's vegetation that fire is slowly devouring. Despite attacking the blaze from the ground and the air, it's only about 10% contained. Another fighter to tell you about, this time in Dallas. Crews were out much of the day battling this scrapyard fire. It broke out around noon. Witnesses say they could smell it from several miles away. No word on what sparked it. Also in Texas, tense moments after a police standoff finally ends in an arrest. This is in Harris County. Police say a man pointed an AK-47 at a group of construction workers. That led to a police chase that ended at this home. The suspect holed up inside for over 90 minutes before eventually surrendering. Police in Oklahoma City are looking for a man who made off with two dozen guns during a brazen smash and grab. The whole thing was caught on surveillance video. This is early this morning inside a Cabela's. You can see the suspect approach the glass case and begin whacking. After the gas glass shatters, he loads up. He even drops a few of the weapons as he makes his getaway. Police say the suspect is a white male who left some blood behind. They're currently running some DNA tests on that. Meanwhile, they say he made off with 25 guns. Two generic versions of the erectile dysfunction drug Viagra are scheduled to hit the market this week. The generic versions of the little blue pill will likely be cheaper than the brand name for most men. And more generic versions are expected next year, which could drive prices even lower. Well, here's a way to attend college and avoid student loans. Step one, get into Brown University. The Ivy League school says starting next year, it will eliminate all student loans in its undergraduate financial packages. They will be replaced with scholarships. This after a $30 million fundraising effort Brown launched in September. Brown administrators say the school plans to raise $90 million more dollars to sustain the scholarship giving. Well, if you love binging on Netflix shows, you're definitely not alone. According to some new data, the most binge-watched shows, that means watching multiple episodes in one sitting, were Stranger Things, a series of unfortunate events, 13 Reasons Why, and a couple other ones. Henry, what's, what's your favorite show to binge watch? Uh, I could always binge watch like any time, Modern Family, but um, but Stranger Things, um, still on season one of that. I've got to finish Stranger Things amongst a lot of other things on Netflix. But hey, a little bit about the weather right now. Also, a couple of chances of flurries over the weekend. But still for now, not looking at any major cold. That could possibly come at least colder temperatures in time for Christmas. You know what my favorite thing to binge watch is? What is that? Your weather report. Oh, thank you. And we're going to get another one tomorrow <laughs> night. Sure will. We'll see you then. <laughs>